Hi, Carol here, and a warm welcome to my craft room. Yes, it has been a while, hasn't it? But I remain in this flu state of pneumonia, and this is the first day that I really felt like going in and doing some crafting for you. So thank you for your patience waiting for my tutorials. And let's carry on and recap with this wonderful technique called nail polish art. It's loads of fun. I enjoyed it. I did the backgrounds for you last week and I promised you I would come back with some cards showing what you can do with the backgrounds of nail polish art and you will be amazed at each card. So different. Now this is the piece that I used for our card today. I think you're going to love the blue hues. I took out my Copics. So many techniques are going to be inside this video. I think you're going to love it. I know our little bird does. Woo! Yes. Isn't this a beautiful, beautiful uh, technique to use nail polish? I mean, who'd have thunk, right? <laughs> We're going to be using a beautiful flower stamp and a gorgeous die that we're going to add in a totally different way on this card and I, I really think you're going to enjoy changing things up and that's what I did today. I decided to take this beautiful nail art and bring it to a whole different level of um, actually using different uh, steps with your Copics and coloring right over top of the nail art. It is gorgeous. So let's begin with setting this into our mini mis misty, our mini misty. Yes, <laughs> I had to take out that black uh, foam piece because of using the red rubber stamp. And this is a CC Design stamp. I love this stamp. I say it all the time, but I haven't used this. It's in my stash. I'm shopping in my stash. The name of it is Himalayan Poppy. So pretty. And the reason why I am using gold embossing powder is to give this beautiful, beautiful, <laughs> oh dear, I'm trying. I'm leaving this in there. Oh, if people only knew how much we take out in our edits. <laughs> I just decided to leave it in. It's late and it's real, folks. And here I'm looking for gold super fine embossing powder. And that little spinner thing, I got at a thrift store, and I'm telling you, I just love it. I, that's the times you wish you could get three or four of them because uh, it holds so many of my powders, and it's so lightweight. So here we go. We've stamped it on to this uh, beautiful image of nail art, nail polish all over. And you wouldn't think, this was my thought today. Let's forget about you wouldn't think. Um, Let's go with this. This is what I was thinking today. I want to incorporate my Copics because I haven't done much Copic coloring uh, in quite a while. And yeah, I'm just going to sing to you there so you don't have to hear the heat tool. <laughs> yeah, this is one crazy video. I love these little birds, don't you, with their little wee um, earmuffs on so, so they don't have to hear it either. <laughs> So now that I have the image with all the gold embossing powder, I want to take out uh, some Copics. Now it has beautiful uh, buds on here that are green. So I thought that I would add um, all the hues uh, that are in the nail art, but brighten them up because there are some green tones in the teals that's all interweaved in the blue tones, which is beautiful. And what I was thinking, <coughs> excuse me, what I was thinking here uh, with the nail art, uh, the nail polish backgrounds that we made, we made a lot of them and I decided to take a different coloring medium for each card and show you how you can 
uh, work those uh, coloring techniques into backgrounds like that and it won't be the same each one will be different so uh, I won't be some of them I won't be going over top I have uh, picked out some wonderful different techniques for cards and as long as my health uh, gives way <laughs> that I can uh, you know do the cards each day I am going to bring each uh, individual coloring medium that I have around my stash and we will color together and I think everybody loves to color and uh, anyway today is Copics and uh, I, I just love as I'm editing I love watching color go down and and how the background of this nail art is adding to the actual Copic coloring isn't that something I have a tutorial on understanding Copic numbering system that I think will really help you when you're doing coloring especially when you want to get a light medium and dark tone uh, I'll put it in the description for you I did it uh, it's just a quick overview but it changed my uh, knowledge of how the Copics were created and the numbering system really does uh, have an actual technique of all, all of its own and uh, once you learn that and you have that down you will be able to combine your colors and it won't seem tedious to you if you find Copic coloring a little frustrating and I wanted to take my micro brush and some color box white ink I love color box for their vibrant white ink I just got this at uh, Michaels I'll show you some things that I bought at Michaels I actually did um, about a week and a half when I was feeling a bit better I did pick up a few things and I just have saved it I haven't really felt well enough to do a little haul tutorial but I will show you and the color box white ink was one of the things on my list I wanted to get and so you take your micro uh, brush your microfiber brush you dip it into the ink and now we're going to do some ghosting we're going to bring that gold line out and this is what's going to make these beautiful poppies pop yes they are this way it uh, actually drowns out some of the nail art so that that flower will pop off the page and yet at the same time it looks like it's actually created all together for this actual coloring because you have to admit there's a lot of colors a lot of direction going on on the background of this card and soon as you put gold and then you do some ghosting and take your finger and there's two steps to this that I I use for myself I put the ghosting down around all the edges and then I smooth it out with my fingers and then I go back with the flicking technique I'll show you that after I put down the glossy accents I decided just to give this flower another pop besides the ghosting effect I'm going to use the glossy accents on all the um, beautiful petals. I think it just adds oh, so much to the card. I'm just picking it up. I'm not putting it in the centers. I want what's ever gold to stay that dull gold. I, I just think it really does stand out. And then when we're finished here, we're going to take our micro brush and then we're going to, just like you do with your Copic markers, you're going to do that flicking technique and it's going to look like wisps like feathers uh, coming out from the flower and it just makes that separate from the actual nail art so crazy pretty I know exactly what you're thinking here <laughs> and <coughs> excuse me I was thinking the same thing I really should have put the flicking first and then added um, the glossy accents right it's kind of like um, backwards there but anyway it worked and it wasn't that bad so now I'm taking the white ink on the fiber brush and I am just you can see that beautiful um, 
flicking just like you would with the Copic marker like I said before and <coughs> excuse me and um, yeah it just gives it this beautiful look of almost like rays of sunshine you know it just seems to that you have the beautiful color on the outside with the nail art and then you have this gorgeous poppy uh, flower on there that just seems to raise up from the page and the um, colors are just um, working together don't you think they're not too dark so that you can see the color behind it and just I think it's a beautiful beautiful uh, technique so now we're going to die use our die cut and our stamp and I chose to use the CC design um, stamp that I showed you there, the Himal uh, Himalayan, excuse me, <laughs> Himalayan Poppy JD1014 if you're looking to order it. And then I love memory box dies. I have two of these, ones with, one with hearts and this scroll work sleeves. And they're actually sleeves to fit over a project so that you can put um, pictures or items into and especially if you're doing albums they work well see how they just slide over um, any page but, but I changed it up here I decided to instead of adding the bulk of this I cut off the um, actual folds and here I'm taking out some of the actual scroll work so that it does not interfere with the poppy at all and yet you're still going to get the nice scroll work all going around but it's going to eliminate hiding any of that beautiful glossy accents and the beautiful poppy. So I chose to cut off the folded ends and just seat it on top. And I put it on the right hand side. And to me that just said interest. It was added interest to take away from all the swirling colors um, that are going on on the page. And what do I do? I add swirling scroll work. <laughs> but you know what? Everything is working together. It all has um, so much beautiful motion that it, it, honestly, I enjoyed every second of this uh, creation here using the background of the nail polish art. And I love to add different interest to a card so that, you know, you th you're looking at it and you think, wow, that flower pops right out. But, you know, you just feel it in your heart. You have to add another in, uh, interest. So I worked with the rule of thirds. And on my um, right-hand side, I found that this sleeve was the perfect third going down. And it didn't take away at all from the poppy nor the nail polish art. Uh, so crazy pretty. So I'm grabbing my fine liners. I'm gonna uh, show you a few things about the fine liners. I put glossy accents behind this. Um, and really, I could have ran that through my Xyron, but there were so many swirls, I did not want to get, have it get in the way the sticky get in the way of the glossy accents that weren't quite dry so I found the glossy accent works worked perfectly and it's snowing gold hearts this gold was meant to be <laughs> now to choose the background color for this I knew I was going to use my 110 pound recollection um, black cardstock from Michaels this is the heaviest black cardstock you're going to find out there. It's beautiful. And then in my stash, I found my Stampin' Up! Lilac. And this just made that gold and blue hues. It had some lilac in the nail art. And it just, to me, oh, it looked beauteous. <laughs> <coughs> so I'm sitting, as you can tell, I generally don't sit when I crowd. And I sat all day mostly, other than having to get a few items, and um, I really, uh, it's hard to get used to sitting, and especially the island is high, so I sit on these high chairs, so every time I have to get down, <laughs> it, it, you know, it's a little bit awake. 
Yeah. And so anyway, I grabbed that lilac. I put it behind there. I didn't want to do anything too extravagant here. As far as the actual base, I wanted just a little sixteenth of an inch of color. So the lilac was beautiful, the black, and then put it on my 140 pound cardstock here. And there's my Fiskars guillotine cutter. Love this. And now I'm going to show you, there's some mistakes that I left in this video for you to show you if it happens to you not to panic. That you can almost correct any mistake other than if your card lights on fire for some reason. <laughs> I think that's about the only thing I couldn't retrieve. <laughs> but other than that, I don't know how my card would light on fire. I don't think I have any fire in my craft room. I think sometimes when I edit, my hands are going so fast they could light on fire. <laughs> but other than that, it only snows gold in my craft room. No fire. So here we are. I'm backing up to show you how I created that beautiful gold page that um, I used the die, that that um, scroll work. So um, I took a sheet of my 140 pound cardstock and um, I put Versamark all over it and oh yeah I don't want you to hear my heat tool. Oh no! <laughs> Even my little birdies don't want to hear it, right? And we're now going on 1230. Yes, 1230 in the morning so um, I get a little silly as we all know but here I'm heat setting this and if you don't have gold card stock the right gold there's many golds out there isn't there but if you don't have the right one match it up with the um, gold embossing powder and uh, that you use as far as your uh, lines your line art and then make it like I'm doing here I'm just adding uh, gold all over the place and I'm going to cut that scroll work um, out of this piece and I'm also going to out of the sleeve I'm going to cut um, the die cut uh, the sentiment and the sentiment is friends any sentiment would work on this type of card but I have friends because I have friends <laughs> yes I do have friends and three of them have been waiting for me to send a little something something and I wanted to create their cards so Vi and Maggie and Michelle if you're watching this yes I do have a little thank you gift to send off to you but I wanted to make you special cards and this pneumonia has backed me up so my wonderful friends Maggie, Vi and Michelle please forgive me for not um, getting that these gifts out to you but I wanted to make this little thank you parcel extra special and while I was not sick I'm just I have three little packages open and I just keep adding little something somethings for you and then I wanted to make you special cards and um, I will get them out in the mail as soon as I have to go to my next doctor's appointment so thank you for your wonderful patience with me so now um, washi tape Get out your washi tape for this project because I, this cardstock is 140 pounds, the white. I get it special made at a stationery store in town. And if you fold it the wrong way, it cracks. So if that happens to you, just take your washi tape and put it along the inside crack line. And then cut it on each side. And when you open it up, not only is it going to cover the cracks in the cardstock, it's going to add stability. So when people are looking at your card and it's going open and shut, open and shut, it's not going to do any damage because you have washi tape. Another great reason to have washi tape around and to use it up right. <laughs> well, here's another mistake, a nice boo-boo for you to see that I had the double-sided tape and look at, I wasn't concentrating and it went down crooked. There's no way you're going to get that up. But when I was at Michael's, I remember watching the paper phenomenon uh, and she was using, she did this exact same thing. And this is called to do, T-U-D-U, I think it is. And I couldn't believe it. You just, it has this black ledge and it's all, it's like an alcohol. It doesn't do one thing to your card. It dries without a mark and it has that beautiful that beautiful like a ski 
slope thing on the end. You put that in and just about as fast as you can see it there, it took that up. The white cardstock was not damaged, no watermarks because I think it's all alcohol on um, inside there. And um, I set it aside. It didn't, I just cut another piece of black cardstock. Everybody has to have that to do liquid in their craft room. Sometimes I've been known to put double-sided tape on my envelopes in the wrong spot and then I close it up and I notice that it's shut and I have to get it open. So instead of wrecking it and pushing it apart, you just slide that scooper black thing and instantly it comes apart. Thank you so much to my paper phenomenon friend for showing that on her video. That was wonderful. So here I start all over again and I watch what I was doing and I have a nice edge. Now I'm going to put double-sided tape and watch what I'm doing again. <laughs> so we get this pretty, pretty um, even look on the card and I think it's wonderful. Look at my Audi. Get away from me. Oh, come on. <laughs> yeah. Video should be fun, shouldn't they? You know, and if they're too long, as my videos do get long and I do get complaints about that, you can just forward it to the end and watch the middle at another time, right? But those of you that like my tutorials just as long as they are, thank you. Now, washi tape. Here comes my, I just showed you this technique I like to use. Cut your pieces of double-sided uh, scotch foam and don't put any weight on them, just leave them there and take the two outside edges and decorate with your washi. Put, because we're using gold, I wanted to put the script gold on here so that when you looked on the side of the card, you saw that beautiful script writing. You don't see that white tape. And I use this quite a bit. Just, you only need to use it on, um, if it's a flip card, just on the outside edges because that's where people are gonna look and wait till you see how pretty it looks. You just add a little bit like that and whatever design you want to see, put that on the outside edges and look it. Doesn't that look much nicer than seeing that white tape? I grab my fine liner and I add glossy accents on the top portions. This will seep down into the glue and if you have the washi tape, it's going to make it so it doesn't um, curl up and look how beautiful the sides look. It reminds me of Wrigley's gum. You know the double your pleasure, double your fun with double mint, double mint, double mint gum. Is that the way it went? Something like that. I mean it's like 60 years ago. Yeah, I can't remember. <laughs> Things get crazy when it gets past midnight when I do my edits. So here's another, um, I'm going to give you a tips about the the uh, fine tip applicators and um, you know this is so cute too we might as well just enjoy this tutorial together I always take a piece you think paper towel but if you're working with glue don't use paper towel it can stick use a dryer sheet a fresh dryer sheet and I'll show you all kinds of different yeah I'm tapping and tapping whenever I tap I'm thinking hmm is this going to work? Is that going to work? Yes. I'm going to do the same image in gold and put it in the right hand corner of the inside where that beautiful gold washi tape script is holding the, um, uh, so you don't see the lines, you know, the fold cracks, I think they call it. And now we're going to put the um, verse mark. We already did that. And now for the, you can tell I didn't clean my stamp. From the last time but it, it isn't going to matter because we're putting this beautiful fine detailed gold um, stamp on there and um, when I use gold you know I always put my gold glitter here so now we're going to take the heat tool my Milwaukee heat tool I'll just give a plug for that because I have four heat tools and I've been trying all of them you know the Tim Holtz one that's stamping up one the one from Michael's and then another one came down the pipe and I found the Milwaukee heat tool. It heats up instantly and I love it. And I know you will too if you're looking for one. 
I want to take just a minute before we do our sentiment. I'm going to use the smallest Zyron that I have. I think it's the little two inch. As we're growing a flower right in the middle of the island here, I'm going to show you how I cut out my sentiment strips and how I pile them on top of each other the easiest way and how you can get this beautiful ghosting tone on tone effect with the same color um, cardstock. So I'll first show you that I die cut five black sentiments that says friends and I take them all out of the black cardstock and then I cut one in gold. Now if anything has an eye make sure you put those little dots in a safe spot because you're going to have to come back to those. <laughs> Don't forget that. You're going to sit out each of them. Yes, I always clean up. We all know. <laughs> if you're new to my tutorials, you have to get used to that. And look at, I'm having a Coca-Cola and I'm having some um, spinach dip with Triscuit crackers. Oh yeah, <laughs> I had to have a munchie in between. That was my lunch actually. And so let's get back to this. Thank you subscribers. Thank you so much for your comments. If I haven't got back to you, it's because of being so sick. And, you know, I'm not getting used to this new system that Google has out with our comments. They they have, with I don't know what they did, but I'm not liking it. And I don't think a lot of people are liking it. Because when you go up there, not only are your comments all mixed up, they're mixed up in with the subscribers you subscribe to. When their tutorials pop up, so, oh, it just so, it, you don't need anything more confusing if you're new to editing, right? And here I'm just using the waxy part of the Xyron that you pulled out and separated from the glue. I use that to pat things down. And let me get back to dryer sheets. Instead of paper towels, use the beautiful new dryer sheet to go over things. It will not only smell good, but it won't release anything sticky and uh, that's the wax part so I start out with the one sentiment that we took out of the paper and I put I, I leave one in excuse me you leave one in and then I run all four black sentiments through the Xyron and look how it fits perfectly and now you just have to stack them and every time you stack just a teensy weensy little bit move it over like micro moving over so you can hardly see it and then when you get to the top one which will be your sixth sentiment the gold one it's going to have black ghosting and it's so lovely <laughs> I'm not gonna say beautiful or pretty and see how I'm always using that wax piece of paper that helps so none of the glue sticks you can also put a little bit of baby powder down. Let's talk about our fine liner containers here. I use Tombow Mono Multi in one. I use my masking fluid because you get a beautiful thin line when you're masking any uh, stamped image images. I use, uh, I said the glossy accents and my multi-medium glue. I put in there any type of glues and they're fine liners. So the blue is your medium, the, the yellow is your large tip. And you for masking, I, I use the finer one uh, because I want to get in all those intricate parts. And this is the name of where I get the um, just the screw on caps. It's scrapperfect.com and you get super buys. At least I bought these three years ago, so or so. So I'm not sure if you can get them up to date. I should have checked that, but I, I'm you know, I think you can get them just about anywhere. Well, now it is sentiment time, my favorite time. Don't you love picking sentiments out? Um, and if you like to calligraphy or brush letter, uh, it's a wonderful time to get some practice in on your envelopes, just doing, um, you know, uh, lettering in that. And that's what I did for you today. So let's move back. Can you just look at everything on this uh, island? It was covered and I had fun. For the first time, it must be because I'm not well. <laughs> I didn't mind a mess all over, but I did get it all cleaned up before I started my uh, tutorial because that would have messed me up. 
knowing that I had all that mess out on the counter. But anyway, that's my problem, right? And I still haven't found my Ranger spritzer thing. I'm still looking. I can't, I have this funny feeling it went out in the garbage. That's a sad thing. So now we have our six high sentiment that says, friend, I kept all the little dots and I have it sitting over there waiting in that upper right hand corner there, waiting to go on when I glue this down with glossy accents. But look at this, 48 sheets of beautiful papers at Michael's, $7 a pack. And you can use your seniors if you're like me, I get 10% off every time you're in there. Then I used my 20% coupon on all orders. I had one from another box company I saved. And look at this. I could only find a blue hue book, 48 colors, and they're textured, which gives you a nice weight. So I picked out this kind of blue teal, just gorgeous. And then I bought a pack of greens to have all the green hues. For $7, this makes a lot of envelopes to match your cards. So here you have it. I have friends. I put our sentiment on the inside with the washi tape holding our card, just so you don't see the scratched edges, the cut edges from folding it the wrong way. It's a five inch by six and a quarter inch card. So when you get the board, I think it was six and three quarters by six and three quarters you had to measure and scoring it at the four inch mark. Uh, but I would check that out. I did the exact measurement at five inches by six and a half and it just made it perfect. Sometimes if I'm putting a card in a gift, I make it a quarter of an inch bigger so that I can wrap the card in tissue and then put the tissue paper and the card in the bigger envelope. And that's always nice. So we're going to score it all over here and then we're going to come up to another mistake. Oh yes, there was lots of them. <laughs> but if you're having fun while you're doing it, come on, pop up there. Yeah, it was wanting to stick on me. So I got that all cut and I'm folding and I grab my Teflon bone folder and make some nice creases in there hopefully. Yep, there she comes. Can't be without that thing. And then I'm going to put in the corner here this gorgeous... Um, poppy stamp. I love it. And then gold again. I'm just taking a little bit of the ink off. And then we'll heat set that. And the card is almost finished. Can you believe it? I think it was nine hours of editing. And I brought that down to 39 minutes. Aren't you proud of me? Oh, even sick. <laughs> I probably would have only been um, four hours, but I took my time today and just really enjoyed it. I haven't been in my craft room for some time. And look at, I made a mistake. Look at on the thank. I made the K too big. So what did I do? I'm not throwing that out. You know me. I just did a flip, you know, put the outside to the inside. And here's where I use my dryer sheets. You don't leave any marks. It's like your Teflon bone folder. When you are... Uh, pressing anything down a dryer sheet that's what you have to have gives it a beautiful smell so I matched it up with that lilac on the teal I was able to cover my mistakes so when nobody's gonna be the wiser right and I'm going to use my favorite Castell pit pen it is an actual um, uh, fiber end to do brush lettering and it's gorgeous uh, I'll leave that up Leave it in the description box if you're looking for it. It has wonderful nylon tip to the bottom. So I tried to keep my hand. I did one letter at a time for you so I could show you the letter. I put one solid line across with, lightly with my pencil so I could... I wanted to do this brush lettering to where my letters were even going across instead of having that floating effect. Uh, doing calligraphy, it's hard to to float. <laughs> you tend to want to stay on lines keeping things in. So um, yeah, I, I decided to do a straight look. So the F, then the R, and you know your thin lines go up and your thick lines go down. And this Faber-Castell pen, if you love brush lettering, 
you're gonna love it it's already inked it's you know like a, a black marker it lets out the perfect amount of ink and it has the perfect flow and we have a friend out there and then when it's dry I put my uh, heat tool to that so that I could take my um, white click eraser very important there's the pen the pit brush pen and I hope you enjoyed this card and envelope I sure enjoyed it um, I've been practicing on my iPad Pro and uh, here I'm able to get see that click white eraser it comes in two sizes it comes in mini 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 nice tiny one and then this small and um, you can get in all the little corners and now we need to fold it and I wanted to use the we are memory keepers um, it's a punch and it punches out the so that you can tuck it's like a tuck and I practiced on the red sheet of paper here to make sure that my curve, my half moon, was going in the right direction before I ever grab my card. Keep your card open and figure out where you're going to put it. It has, you lift it up, it has a metal, you know, it pounces down, and there you have it. There's the it's two pieces. It has top and bottom written on it, and there you have it. Look at that. It just makes a nice moon shaped. Um, punch and then I'm going to put this in there but I'm going to need to cut off just a wee little bit of the top flap and that's not hard at all so I put down um, the double-sided tape remember don't put it up to the top because it will stick when you go to fold it right like don't put it on the bottom flap put it always on the sides and then there you have it. Look at that. I just cut off a little bit the edge. I fit my card in. It just slid in there and that made me happy. This whole card made me happy and I'm so glad I could get this tutorial up by 1.30 in the morning. Yes. I can't wait to create more cards using these nail polish backgrounds. Each one will be different and each technique, I think, will uh, help all of us to be able to uh, come up with different ideas to use the nail polish art. That, to me, doesn't take any time at all. And then let's come up with a, I'll, I'll come up with a whole lot of different techniques for you. And like I said, I'm shopping in my craft room, so I found a whole lot of little goodies to be able to create for you this week. And thank you for your prayers. I sure did appreciate that. I found strength in that. And um, I'm looking forward to a great week using these background um, cards. So take care, everybody. Have a blessed week. Lord bless you. And I'll see you on the next tutorial, my friends. Mm -hmm.